Welcome back. A state-of-the-art digital tech education hub called Boundless Soweto Campus will be launched in the next few in the next week rather in the township. It means it is to empower South Africa's unemployed youth with globally recognized and accredited IT, AI, and 4IR skills. Boundless Group Managing Director Sipo Klassen joins us for more. Sipo, very good evening to you and thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me, Katia. It's an absolute pleasure. So let's first talk about Boundless Group. It's a collective of companies that are yes. looking to address South Africa's socio-economic challenges. Just talk to us about that composition. Certainly. We are a composite of about four companies that actually focus on certain, you know, skills development areas. Okay. Of which two that are very prominent is your learnerships, uh, your traditional learnerships and skills programs, and the other is your work integrated learning, your YES programs, where we actually take young people from where they are and we actually place them with companies for a period of 12 months to gain that practical work experience. Mm, that's interesting. So now you've gone and done something absolutely amazing, found a, a dilapidated school in Deep Kloof, Soweto, that's been standing vacant for what, 15 years? 15 plus years, yes. 15 plus years, and now you've gone and converted it. Talk to us about this initiative and really what your aim and what you look to address with this particular campus. Definitely. You know, Katleko, what we found is that young people lack access to infrastructure, lack access to mentorship, and quality education in townships. You know, the question that we found, well, that we've often debated mm. in our boardrooms was, is that why do young people have to travel to the big cities for these particular opportunities when there is infrastructure like abandoned schools in townships and why is it that we cannot take these opportunities to them? What we then did was is that we've taken a 12 classroom school and we've renovated it completely into a++, N++ facilities where actually learners are in theory rooms, okay. practical rooms where they're actually engaging in dismantling a PC, putting it together to again, and actually testing and playing with AI programs, software development, programs like Java, Python, and that's actually what they're doing in these labs. Um, because we know that's the future, you know, it and this is where is. we're going. Yeah. So you say 12 classrooms, how many students are you looking to house? So currently the campus actually went live in January. We currently have 75 active young people over there, okay. of which 90% is actually young women oh, in wow. tech that have interest in tech. So we've got 75. We earmarked that this year we're going to be surpassing about 500 young people in Soweto. I can tell you, Katlejo, from January onwards, we've had over a thousand CVs that we've received where youth are coming as far as Tembisa Katleong actually trying to submit their CVs to get to these opportunities. And it just speaks to the need that's over there. Yeah. So yes, that's that's what's happening over and there. And just the, the basic requirements in order for one to be able to, to access? Definitely. So what we do is through our academy, um, again, we would take a basic qualification like your tech support. Entry level requirements is either grade 12, depending on the end curve level of the qualification. Mm -hmm. But what we've also done is that We've augmented that. We've included Cisco programs because we know this is the kind of the, the need out there kind of thing. This is what the job market is looking for is candidates that actually have that kind of prerequisite of skills in order to get into the job market. But a minimum grade 12, we have gone lower depending on the entry level requirements of the NQF level. Mm. Yes. And just any collaborations with government agencies um, that have come on board in order to assist in ensuring that there is growth with not just this campus and then possibly other campuses Certainly. in the near you future? You know, Katleko, we've been very fortunate. And I'll tell you, as, as much as there hasn't been a lot of government intervention, there's some large corporates that have come forward. And these corporates are not necessarily from the tech industry, but what they have come to recognize is that there's a need, there's young people that need our support and you know the opportunities is to this quality education, and they've jumped in. And it's gone far as enterprise development. We've been very grateful where we've received enterprise development, and this has been part of the reason why we've been able to put this campus together. And further to that, actually funding these young people where whilst they're on campus, they actually receive a stipend every month. Uh -huh. We know that some of our young people come from very dire circumstances. Our courses and our programs and the offering that we're doing in Soweto is absolutely free of charge. We do not charge these candidates a cent to be over there. And this is where these big corporates are jumping on board and saying, through their BE skills development spend, they're funding the actual training curriculum of these learners and affording them a stipend for 12 months while they're learning these skills and acquiring these AI, cloud computing, data science, cybersecurity skills, yeah. So, I mean, if it's, if it's offered for free, the demand for this must be very high. Hence, I told you, is that we're sitting at over a thousand CVs that we've received to date, and the demand is so high, 
and we're always appealing to corporates to come forward and help us. For example, our launch next week, as you indicated, on the 14th of March, we've had an overwhelming response. Big corporates are coming forward. Um, so we're really looking forward to the 14th of March to really opening up the doors and assisting those 1,000-plus candidates getting mm. there. And, of course, I mean, when you hear something like this taking place in Soweto, many other townships would want a, a boundless campus on, on their grounds. Are there Definitely. any plans to expand into there other places? There is an places? expansion plan. In fact, this is the first of this nature or skill or size, rather, that we've done now in Soweto. Um, it's been a big learning curve for us. Um, yes, a lot of teething problems, but mm. I'm glad that we've gotten to this point that next week, Friday, we're launching this particular campus. As I indicated, we've got 75 young people that are going through this particular programs. Um, but yes, there is an expansion plan. We, we definitely want to roll this out. And once we have this blueprint, you know, lockdown, definitely Katleho, we will be going into other townships, not other cities, other townships. Very to take important. these opportunities there. Yeah. I mean, you speak of teething problems. Just what were the challenges that you would highlight um, uh, that would form part of that blueprint that you make mention of, that when you then move into other townships, Definitely. you would have certainly learned those lessons. You know, the thing is, Katlejo, the community is very involved in that. But you know, what we've also picked up working in a community like Soweto is that there is a dire need for opportunities in this particular thing. What we were very clear on from the onset, that we're going to work with the community, we're going to involve the community. So the laborers that we were actually using on site actually came from the community, whether they were skilled, semi-skilled or unskilled. We had plumbers, you know, tilers. Those were the people that we were using. The problem was is that you'll have somebody from a different ward saying, but why aren't we involved in this particular mm -hmm. initiative? So why has ward so-and-so not been involved in this particular initiative? Mm. And as much as we want to create these opportunities for as many people, um, for example, today I was having a conversation with our chairperson on campus is that we are going, actually on the 14th, we're graduating 50 young people from Shoshonguve that actually completed both system support and tech support. And we were talking about the regalia in terms of what we want to break the norms. Yeah. While somebody might have the gown on, we're actually going to have young, well, more the elderly ladies from the community actually doing the sash for our young people. That's amazing. So we really want to extend it beyond youth, but also include the older bunch from these communities in yeah. these particular opportunities. That, that's a wonderful initiative. I mean, you speak about graduates that would be coming from Soshanguvi, meaning that this project has been ongoing. It's not only starting with this campus Certainly. in Soweto. We've been around, well, we've been actively training through our academy since about 2022. Um, like I said, we've got 50 young people from Soshanguvi in particular. Mm. And really, we believe in the township economy. We really believe in terms of Taking, our, taking these opportunities to our young people. For example, we actually did it in one particular center in Shoshanguve. Again, there's always challenges, but we believe we need to take these opportunities to them. Katlejo, you know, our, some of our young people come from very dire circumstances. Child-headed households, there's abuse, and you get it. For example, something that we're doing in, at the Soweto campus, we're going to have an on-site social worker and an on-site nurse to help some of our young people through these challenges that they're going through. Because, you know, some of them come to classes with empty bellies. Mm. We are designing or building in there a commercial kitchen where they get at least a meal a day. And that is the kind of things that we're trying to do. We want to take these opportunities to them and we're calling on corporates to assist us in this endeavors. For example, if we just take what happened last week, Microsoft was here. In fact, this week, Microsoft, this week, yes. a 5.4 billion investment that sees over a million young people going to be developed in digital skills. And that is what we're looking for. Mm. And what we're trying to do is that we want to make it easier for these big corporates to say, there is a facility, let's partner with them kind of thing. So we as young, small South African businesses, we need to also take the lead. Most so certainly. that when these big corporates see, they say, they are leading, let's support them let's kind of thing. Let's help them out. Certainly great work that you're doing. I'm sure Appreciate many that. young people are going to take up this opportunity. We wish you all the best and we hope to see many of these campuses sprouting across many townships in South Africa.